Abar may now be a regular on the La Liga fixture list, but few people have heard of them before 2014, even in Spain. That all changed with their unlikely promotion to Spain's top flight, which put this little Basque town with a population of 27,000 people on the map. The club was founded in 1940, but largely went unnoticed through its first 60 years of existence, as Abar yo-yoed up and down the lower divisions, spending 18 seasons in the regional leagues, 23 in the third tier and 19 in the second tier. By the turn of the century, they'd become a second division regular, but even that was an overachievement for a club of a similar size to Fleetwood Town or Elgin City. As former president Alex Aranzabal put it, Abar's logical place is in the third division. In the 2004-2005 season, they came close to promotion to the top level of Spanish football, but fell short on the final day. Technically, they were in La Liga for 26 minutes between 6.47 and 7.13pm on June the 18th, but they ended up drawing, whilst other results also failed to fall their way. We're all quite annoyed, Captain Gaizka Gadatano said afterwards, but one day his dream of winning promotion with Abar would come true. By 2012, Abar had fallen back into the regionalised 80-team third tier and hired Garitano as coach after two previous failed promotion attempts. Under his guidance, they reached the playoffs and defeated Alcoyano, Real Oviedo and Los Pitalet to secure promotion. Now back in the second tier, Abar had the smallest budget at 3.5 million euros and were favourites for the drop. After a tough start of just two wins from their first nine matches, Abar's form picked up thanks to their league-leading defence and they inched towards the promotion places. By the third from last weekend of the season, they had a chance of securing an automatic promotion place that had once seemed unthinkable. If they defeated Alabas and if Las Palmas lost to Recreativo Huelva, then promotion would be theirs. In the 61st minute, Winger Hota received the ball in the centre of the 5,000-seater Ipura Stadium and took aim. I hit it as if it was the last ball I was going to hit in my life, he said afterwards, and duly struck it well enough for it to earn his side a 1-0 victory. Las Palmas lost their game 3-2 and Abar became La Liga's smallest team. However, there was still one final hurdle to overcome. A Spanish law requires every team in professional football to have a social capital which equates to 25% of the average expenses of all other teams in the second division, minus the two clubs with the largest expenditures and the two with the smallest. Due to this red tape, Abar had to increase their capital value from €420,000 to the new target of €2.1 million, even though they were one of Spain's few debt-free clubs. One successful crowdfunding campaign later and they had smashed the target, with people from more than 50 different countries purchasing the 50 euro shares to help out this team in need. That meant Abar was now part owned by fans from across the globe, from Spain to Australia and Oman to China. It also meant that they could claim their rightful place in La Liga. Abar started well and sat as high as 8th by the 2014-15 season's midway point, but a disastrous second half of the campaign, of 2 wins, 2 draws and 15 defeats, saw them finish 18th. That should have meant relegation, but 13th placed Elche had overreached in building a squad they couldn't afford and were demoted as they owed money to their players and to the taxman, allowing financially prudent Abar another chance in La Liga. Led by the talented but sensible sporting director Fran Garagaza and new coach José Luis Mendilibar, Abar had an excellent second season in La Liga, finishing 14th. They've started the 2016-17 campaign even better and at times have even challenged for a Europa League spot, meaning the giants of the continent could soon be paying this little valley town a visit. Even if European football isn't achieved, the fact that Messi, Ronaldo and Griezmann visit once per season is still incredible.